What would you think if I said there's a source of spiritual revelation that people from every faith tradition, including atheists, could agree on? Hi, I'm J.D. Stillwater, a science educator at the Circle School in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I've spent most of my life exploring the relationship, if any, between science and spirituality, and I've learned three surprising things. The universe is more mysterious than we imagine. Science confirms some important spiritual principles, and it offers a common ground for people of conflicting religious beliefs to celebrate creation's glories together. Here's an example. Take a deep breath. Every time you inhale, you breathe in air molecules, lots of air molecules. So now think of a historical figure. It could be anyone, Mother Teresa, Hitler, doesn't matter. In the breath you took while you were thinking just then, you breathed in over 700 million air molecules that were also at some point inside the lungs of the person you thought of. So that juice or water or coffee you drank this morning, some of it was an oak tree last month, a glacier last spring, part of a comet last year. And now it's you, seawater, walking upright, contemplating the universe. Almost all of the atoms in your body get recycled for new ones every year. Your body is like a standing wave on a river. Matter moves through you and takes your form briefly, then moves on to become something else for a while. For centuries, mystics and prophets have told us we're all connected, but now we really know, not as a matter of faith, though faith is good too, but because we can read the book of nature itself. Now, I know when I use the word science and spirituality in the same sentence, I think people have in mind something like this, a spectrum with spirituality and science at opposite ends and extremists at each end screaming insults at each other and shouting down anyone that ventures into the middle or even suggests there could be a middle ground. So what's a profound spiritual experience you've had? Did it involve nature in some way? It often does for me. So where does nature fit on our spectrum? I propose a rearrangement, a new spectrum, one that's defined by our comfort with uncertainty, with mystery and doubt, the unknown. These are central drivers of both spirituality and science. To me, spirituality and science are twin concepts because both are all about questions, wonder, and mystery. Certainty is alien to them. You know, the most exciting answer for a scientist or a mystic is that nobody knows. A hundred years ago, the science disciplines were all distinct with clear boundaries between them, but they've grown to the point of overlap so that now they tell a pretty coherent story about the nature of reality. And that story is bizarre. It's way outside our everyday experience. At the same time, our discoveries have revealed new mysteries we couldn't even have seen a hundred years ago. This is a waterfall near Buffalo, New York, where a jet of natural gas just seeps out of the rock behind the waterfall. Gas that we now know as the flammable fossil remains of gigantic ferns that lived 300 million years ago. I used to think of reality as mundane, mechanical, predictable. But now we know that even solid things are made of particles that are elusive, effervescent, more like dreams than objects. Today, scientists and science-minded people are contemplating things like the curvature of space-time and quantum entanglement, profound discoveries that for many scientists invoke a feeling of transcendent mysticism. And theologians are finding that creation gets more glorious, more stunningly praiseworthy with each discovery, so that science shows up as more an ally to spiritual devotion than an adversary. My Seven Candles work is about how science is enriching my spirituality because it's grounded in reality, not the cold, hard reality we think we live in, but the luminous, mysterious, interconnected reality described by science today. Recent discoveries urge me to embrace mystery rather than trying to erase it and to let wide-eyed childlike wonder supplant the adolescent certainties of my dogma. The new reality being revealed by science today moves me in a way I can only describe as spiritual. And it's a communal source of inspiration. It offers itself for the enrichment of every seeker. 
So no matter what your religious background is, or none, I invite you to consider science as an ally in your quest for the sacred, for the transcendent, the holy, and to embrace mystery as the heart of your spiritual seeking until the most exciting thing you can say to a child is, nobody knows. Now, if you like what you've heard here, I'd love to have a Seven Candles conversation with you and your organization. We'll explore some scientific revelations that offer to enrich our spiritual lives, however different our faith backgrounds might be. Thank you. <laughs>